Good day. And finally, we're going to be reviewing Colonial Marines. I've read so many reviews just lambasting this as one of the worst pieces of crap to come out in recent years. I've read so many comments saying how horrible this thing is. But you know what? This game isn't bad. In fact, it's a long shot from a piece of crap. In fact, this has got to be one of the best first-person shooters I've played in many years. Ah, here we have Colonial Marines. I know many people have complained about the graphics and the gameplay, but really, why? This is a great game. I mean, look, the gameplay is arcadey, but that's exactly what you should expect from a game like this. What else could it be? A bloody RPG? Now, people have complained about the graphics, but this is the Doom engine. How can you complain about that? These graphics are absolutely perfect. Now, many people have also really praised how the locations in this game match the locations in Aliens, and they do a great job of it. This actually looks like the atmosphere processor from Aliens. The gameplay is just extremely fun and extremely difficult. You'll be fighting dozens, hundreds of xenomorphs, and it's just that amazing that they can actually have this many enemies in a game. These days you usually just see, you know, maybe three enemies attacking you at once, but here you've got like 20 coming at you, and you have to be really skillful to kill them all. Really, just on the basis of graphics and gameplay alone, this game is really quite solid. And in fact, I'd say it's better than Halo 4! Okay, General, I didn't want to tell you this, but... You're not reviewing that game, you're reviewing this game. No. Yes. Not that one. You're reviewing this game. No, not, not, not that. I'm, I'm sorry. Anything but that. You have to accept it. No. Accept it! No! Do it! No! And so here we have Colonial Marines. Now, we have been waiting for this game since 2008. And by God, does this look like absolute ass. I normally don't swear like that, but I'm sorry. That's the only word that can be used to describe these graphics. This looks like something from the very early days of the Xbox. Hell, you know what? This looks like glorified PS2 graphics. I mean, my God, how in 2013 do you have a game that looks this Bad! And, as you would expect, this is a generic FPS. It hits all the right numbers. You've got two weapons. You've got an infinite ammo pistol, which is actually kind of different from other first-person shooters, although not different from that crappy AVP3. Although, as many of my fans have commented, this game is actually far worse than AVP3. I tried while playing this to say that, oh yeah, Colonial Marines may be all of these bad things, but at least it's still better than AVP3, right? Well, no. This game's gameplay is virtually unchanged from AVP3. You can take three hits and it can be restored via health packs and things of that nature or you can just let it regenerate one bar at a time. Now these days I've actually started playing a bit of PS3 and one PS3 exclusive I've played was Resistance Fall of Man who has the exact same health setup. It looks like AVP3 was even more creatively bankrupt than I initially thought. What is there to really say about this game that hasn't been said? Do I talk about the bad voice acting? Do I talk about the story that literally goes nowhere? Not really. I mean, you all know how bad this game is. It's clearly apparent how bad this game is. So why shall I continue to beat a dead horse? Well, I can tell you why. Simply because beating a dead horse is fun. The dead horse doesn't fight back, and you get to work out a lot of frustration. Well, I'm a horrible person, but anyway! Okay, so here's the story. Hicks somehow does not die, and decides to send out a distress signal. The distress signal is picked up by another group of marines, and they go and track down the Sulaco, which is somehow in orbit above LV-426. The only problem is the game doesn't do a very good job of explaining why it's here. And so, you play 
Corporal Winter, otherwise known as Generic McGeneric 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 McGeneric! And basically, he's a complete dumbass. He and some other dumbass Marines go throughout the Sulaco, and there's been much said about how the Sulaco looks like it did in Aliens, but unfortunately, the graphics are so horrible, it's like looking at the PS2 version of the game. You know, that's actually a good question. What if this actually is the PS2 version? You see, there was originally going to be an Aliens Colonial Marines on the PS2. So what, did they take, like, that half-finished game and then finish it like they did with Duke Nukem Forever? So anyway, you go through the Sulaco, it turns out that Wayland Yutani now called Way you what the hell, ladies and gentlemen? Why is it called Way you what? what? Uh, anyway, you go through there. You see there are stunning xenomorphs on the ship for some reason. You shoot some xenos, which look like complete crap and have poorer animation than they did in AVP One all the way back in 1999. So yeah, you shoot xenomorphs. They're not really a threat. I mean, they run at you and you shoot them. It is somewhat difficult to hit them because all the guns are horribly inaccurate and very underpowered. Also, might I point out that in the very first bit of the game that you actually get to control, the Marine Corporal Winter decides to take out the magazine to check to see if it's loaded and sees metallic cartridges? What in the fuck is with that, ladies and gentlemen? What the fuck? We all know that the pulse rifle is supposed to have caseless ammunition, so why the hell does this have a goddamn case? Also, these pulse rifles are supposed to be different from the one seen in the movie. You see, instead of holding 99 rounds like they did in every other game ever, they instead decided to have them only hold about 40. You can get it upgraded to about 60, but still, at least the game tries to explain this by saying that this shoots higher powered rounds. The only problem here is, wasn't the M41A pulse rifle supposed to be standard issue? And these are standard issue marines, not spec ops! So you fight through the Sulaco, and you know, you just generally get kind of bored because the game is just horribly repetitive. There's no tactics that you have to use other than just move forward and shoot. It's like a point and click adventure game, except horrible. You eventually fight some humans. Now, this is not really out of place. You know, you fought humans in Alien Trilogy, which is also another horrible Aliens FPS. And, you know, fighting humans could be fun. Potentially. It certainly was fun in AVP 2. But unfortunately, it is not here. It's very boring. It's just kind of like fighting the Xenomorphs. You just stay in cover. You pop out. You shoot them. You pop out. You shoot them. The, the human AI is just horrible. Sometimes they'll just charge at you, which is actually more dangerous than when they shoot at you because when they charge you, you have to really try to shoot them, otherwise they'll kill you in a couple of hits. Eventually, the ship gets shot up, and my god, are these graphics horrible. Look at that. That's just a black chunk of polygons. What the hell? And your ship gets shot up, you gotta escape the ship, and that's it. You land on the planet, and then it gets even crappier. Yeah, this is LV-426 after the atmosphere processor explodes. Roll clip. 19 minutes this area is gonna be a cloud of vapor the size of Nebraska. That's a damn sight smaller than Nebraska. Apparently, cloud of vapor means buildings that are hardly damaged. In fact, the buildings are even useful. But moving on from this idiocy, let's get on to the voice acting. Voice acting sucks. So much. They got some high, well, I say high level. They used to be high level. They're not anymore. They got people that could act. You have Lance Hendrickson playing Lance Hendrickson as Bishop. And you know what? It should sound good, but it sounds like crap. You've got Michael Bine as Hicks. Why does he sound like complete crap? And every other voice actor sucks just as much. And the dialogue they have to spout is even worse. I mean, just listen to this. I wake up in the morning thanking baby Jesus for every day I'm in the core. Yeah. That's some great voice acting there. That's some great dialogue. I mean, this isn't just... Somehow, the voice acting in this game is worse than an AVP3. I don't get it. You know, early 2000s voice acting wasn't very bloody good compared to modern voice acting, and yet, AVP2's voice acting, as stilted and as robotic as it was, is actually better than the voice acting in this game. Also, it's really hard to get invested in the story when all the characters look like this. It, it just boggles the mind how they could screw the graphics up so bloody much. Okay, on LV-426, there's no real plot. It's just survive, basically, and find all the Marines. There's some stupid moments, but nothing is worse than this point here. You're running from this Praetorian, which you could shoot, you know, in AVP-1 and AVP-2, and hell, even in AVP-3, you stood a bit of a chance. But no, here, all you can do is run. And then you get a power loader. Where this power loader came from, I have no idea! So you get the power loader, and you might think, you might think the game will get really awesome. Just look at this footage for a second, shall we? Yeah, 
yeah, all you do is just sort of flail around in vain hope to actually hit this thing. And then when you actually grab onto it, I don't know if I'm doing it or not. In fact, I let go of the controller at one point and the Marine still squeezed the Xenomorph's head. Why am I even playing this game if the game's going to play it for me? That's another good thing to bring up. The QTE moments. There are none. Where there should be QTE moments, there's no QTEs. You just sit there and the Marines do it themselves. Why am I bloody well here? As for the weapons, they're all pretty generic. You got the battle rifle, you got the pulse rifle, you got some shotguns, you got some pistols. There's some legendary weapons you can pick up, although I don't know why. You can pick up Hicks's shotgun, which somehow got back to the Sulaco, even though I have a feeling it was on the APC and useless, because when Hicks shot the Xenowolf, it melted the barrel off. Also, you can find Gorman's pistol. How you can do this, I don't know, since it was supposed to have been blown up by the atmosphere processor that that was supposed to destroy an area the size of Bloody Nebraska. Nebraska. Okay, so Wayland Yutani is on the planet. What they're doing there is never really explained. You know, they're studying xenomorphs. Why? Because. How they got there and set up such a giant facility in just, what, three months? I don't know. But eventually you get a mission to rescue Hicks. You don't know it's Hicks because the game doesn't tell you, but it's pretty obvious it is Hicks. Basically, you're told you have to rescue a captured Marine. And you learn he's from the Sulaco. Well, let's see. How many Marines survived the events of Alien? I think it was one. Mystery solved. So you rescue Hicks, and well, then the game kind of meanders a bit. And then it turns out you've got to go attack the main Wayland Yutani base. Now, the reason why you're doing this is because you have to get an FTL capable ship. And so so you actually get one of the best cutscenes of the game. Too bad what it sets up is just another generic fight, but hey, let's take a look at it for just a second. This is Raider 6-5. Once in the facility, I will supply geographical intel to all ground forces. Eyes up and identify all ground or air targets. Roger that, Raider! We move in quick and put down targets as fast as you can pull! Understood, Winter. Good hunting and save some for me. 6-5 out. This is Sulaco Actual. All ground units prepare for deployment. Here we go. That looked awesome. That was the single most awesome point of the game. You have all the APCs driving around, you got the dropships going, you think this is going to be great, but then you disembark and all you do is shoot some generic guys. Yay. So, eventually, you hard charge onto the FTL ship, and then, it turns out, the Queen jumped up there with you. Now, this is a Queen fight, and we all know how much it sucked in AVP3, but you know what? It somehow manages to suck worse here. You do more in this boss fight than you did in AVP3. In AVP3, all you did was shoot some face huggers and flip a couple of switches. Here, you've got to actually avoid the Queen and then charge this launcher. Once you charge the launcher, it somehow launches the queen out. But you know what? It then cuts to this point where it shows the queen climbing back in. Come on, people. Come on. Why? Why couldn't you just had it be knocked out? So, of course, the marine commander, who is horrible, by the way. I mean, they, I think they tried to give him some sort of a gruff persona, but they failed. He sacrifices himself. And you know what? Since you had no investment in this character to begin with, nobody cares. He sacrifices himself to kill the queen in the most roundabout way possible. He crashes the ship into her. And, and you know, he could have just shot the queen with, like, the rotary chain gun that was on the ship, but whatever. Let's just get this over with, shall we? Okay, now you might think, we gotta fight through the ship. We gotta fight through there and take it over, and then we'll get on with the game, right? No. Apparently, Wayland is actually on this ship. Why is he on this ship? Who knows? Basically, there's a plot going through the game that obviously goes nowhere that you have to find Wayland and make him pay. Now, you might think you might have to track him down on some planet, but no, he's on the ship. Where is he on the ship? He, you open the first door into the ship and he's standing right there. No guards to fight. No, nothing. And of course, there's a supposed tense moment. And it works a little bit. This is a decent moment. It shows that they might have actually had a little bit of creativity. But then, we get treated to what is literally the worst ending ever. Roll it. Is this dangerous? There are tubes in my brain. Dumb question. Incredibly sorry. You ready, Bishop? It's already downloading. Please give me a moment, Winter. Is, is this going to work? It'll work. How do you know? You lost a girl too, right? Yeah. Me too. It has to work. Bishop, are you okay? Please tell me we got something. Anything. We really need a win here, man. We got everything.
I mean, come on, this is the biggest piece of fuck I've ever had to play. I mean, I thought AVP 3 was bad, but this is just horrible. This is like Halo 2's ending ratcheted up to a billion. I just can't stand the fact that they had to do this. This makes Dragon Age 2's horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just go bowling.